What's up guys, it's Connor aka Conogre coming at you um, again with another little quick tutorial. Uh, this time we're going to be looking at doing um, tusks. Um, this could also be transferable to doing any type of bones, but um, the process is a little more extensive for tusks when you're doing the blending as opposed to um, like a tusk, uh, like the bones that you see on this guy. So. The process, which I'm going to go into detail with after, um, is not too long. It's pretty easy. This is the result you get. That's the blending. If I can get up close here. Let me get that, get that scoped in here. Uh, maybe not. Here we go. So you go from like a black to a dark brown to a reddish brown to a ochre color. Uh, back into the bleached bone and it's the same effect on the tusks and the small the small tusk sticking out at the front of the um, right there so that's the effect we're going for to start off you're going to take a mornfang or something equivalent and let me note before this starts I uh, have this going on like a makeshift rig for the iPhone uh, if this thing ends up falling off I do not have the time or the patience to retape this, so please excuse something if there is a big crash and a clang. I'm just going to reset it up and keep rolling with it. <laughs> um, so back to this. All I've done here is uh, based with Rockarth flesh. Uh, then I dry brushed very quickly with some white. Uh, I used Praxy White to dry brush. Um, and I'll show you what the Rockarth flesh looks like if you haven't seen it. It's kicking around here somewhere, I believe. No, can't find it. Oh well, I'll get it later. So, for the actual highlighting process, like I said, start with the Rackarth Flesh. Um, the old one, I believe, was called Deneb Stone. I, I could be wrong on that, but uh, if you look it up on the chart, I'm sure you'll find it. We're going to be highlighting up with these colors. We're starting with a uh, Valor Brown, moving into the XV88. Uh, then going for a Mornfang Brown into a Rhinox Hide. And then finally, for the absolute very tip, Chaos Black. Or something very, very dark. You could even use like a really super dark brown, but I don't know how much darker you get than Rhinox Hide. So, um, so anyways, we'll get to it here. I got my dry brush. It's a piece of shit. It's falling apart. But that's fine. Um, we're going to get our Rhinox here. And we're going to get our Baylor Brown. Open this puppy up, and we're gonna get a dry brushing towel. This is mine. Ooh, delightful. Um, I really should get some more, but once again, kind of lazy. So, we're gonna get a little Bello Brown. As with most dry brushing, we're gonna wipe off pretty much all of it. And then we're going to go here, and we're just going to I light. I usually do downstrokes. A little more natural effect. Okay. You want the tip as dark as possible in the color that you're currently using because they're going to add up and give you a really nice darkened effect at the end. So I usually drag it down about halfway. Out to there. Might look a little wonky right now, but that's okay. That'll change later. I'm doing this a little faster than I normally would, just to save me a hell of a lot of time. But you know what? I think the the end effect is probably going to be quite similar. Sorry if I go out of focus here for a minute. This is a first with this rig, so. Hopefully it uh, works out all right. Just doing the very tip here. Another thing to be careful of um, is to make sure you put on enough of the base coat of the Rackarth flesh because I find later on in the processes when you're putting on the coat uh, on the later coats um, you can chip it back and it's it's probably just because my brush is so crappy right now and I really need to upgrade it 
it's got some very stiff edges. Uh, it's happening before where it's um, it's scraped some of the paint and then it exposes the white through the, the black that you're putting on the last step and it looks really bad and it, it's just kind of time consuming to fix so be wary. I find I, I usually position it just like this so I can make sure I'm going down to the same level I was with the other one. And it looks like we're doing fine. I don't know if you can see the the black, the very black tip right there. It actually happened again. It doesn't matter though. On the on these stages, you're going to be going over it again anyways. So. so it doesn't really matter. I'm curious to see how long this video is going to come out to be. Christ, I'm already at six minutes. I don't know where the time goes. It's painting for you, I guess. But then some people come out and they're like, dude, time goes by so slow when I'm painting. But I guess that means you're just not really enjoying it. And if you're enjoying it, then, well, that's good, I guess. You get to enjoy the time more. <laughs> okay. So that looks pretty good for the Baylor Brown. We've got that on there. I can maybe unexpose that light a little bit to give you a better view of the, of the yellow. So they're coming down to about the same levels, and that's what we're looking for. That that's that's nothing crazy. Just drag it down to the same level. Yeah, that looks fine. So now we're gonna move on to the XV88. Um, the XV88 looks a lot different than the Baylor Brown. Actually, under the light, it really doesn't. But in person, they're quite contrasted. If you use the same colors I'm doing, you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. So we're going to take this and we're going to drag it down again. But we're only going to go, oh, see, halfway. Halfway um, to where we were before. So I'm going to drag that down, down, down. Just to about, hmm, probably about, probably about here is where we'll go to. Just so we're seeing the tail end of that bell or brown that we put on before. Oh. That'll be all. Again, sorry guys if this angle is the pits, but there's not too too much I can do about it. I'm really not a good cinematographer. Nor do I pretend to be. So there's the difference in the two tusks right now, as you can see. You're starting to see that blending happening. And as you can see, there's no wet blending going on, there's nothing crazy. This is just basic dry brushing. And what's going to tie it in at the end is the um, the wash, which I didn't talk about before as part of the process. But yes, you will need um, a little bit of wash. I'm sure Agrax Earthshade would work fine. I myself use Griffin Sapia for anything to do with bones because I just think it's the it's really the, the perfect wash for anything to do with uh, anything made of calcium. You, know, you get that oxidized look to it. Okay, so we're just dragging that down, slowly but surely. Nice. Looking good. Oorah. It's really, really, really snowy outside today. We had a huge, like, blizzard last night. Not cool. I uh, love winter more than anybody. Or as much as the next guy, yeah. I guess some people really don't like winter. I I used to do a lot more stuff, like I used to ski, I used to do a lot of snowshoeing, winter camping, snowmobiling, etc, etc, etc. Over the years it's kind of slowed down. Just 
the time, I guess. Less accessibility to it. So here's the thing. Look at, look at the quick, look at my hand. I don't have a steady hand. <laughs> Just shows. You don't need a steady hand to paint. It's a technique. Prodigy. Okay, so we're moving on to the uh, Morn Fang Brown now. This is where you sort of have to be a little bit careful because you jump up contrast. Yeah, so you, you jump up on the, well, I guess it is contrast. But it really, really darkens. So you kind of got to be wary of what you're doing. Put a little less on the paint or on the brush, um, because if you're not careful, it'll um, it'll like just blow it out, and you you don't see any of the blending. This is where it is. Up at the top, it's okay to put like a really big blob of brown, but as you drag it down, you got to be to be careful. This is probably going to be my longest video yet. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's a quite a boring video, I'm sorry guys, but... And, if you would have rather me just done a, um... A, uh, what do you call it? A picture tutorial. Well, vocalize it. And I'll think about it for next time, but... I don't know, I've got pretty good feedback for these videos, and I think people like them, so... Um, I'm gonna keep going until someone tells me that they're getting kind of boring, and I could have saved a lot of time and effort by just doing this on my picture format. And that's fine, too. Gotta go to my father's for dinner tonight. It's always fun. I say that sarcastically, but it is fun. It's always good to see my father. If I had to guess on a cold day like this, I'm sure he's probably making probably a stout, probably a chowder or a stew. I'll get back to you and see if that is true or not. But seriously, he does make that stuff a lot. It's quite a quite an outdoor. I just see my giant hands in the way. Sorry, guys. So, there we have it. The Morn Frame Brown. And look look at that. You see, start to see that transition. It takes time. This is 15 minutes and we're just doing tusks. But, yeah, you start to see it's starting to come together. We're now moving on to Rhinox Hide. Same deal again. We're getting to something that is drastically darker than the last paints. Watch how this goes on. Huge difference. Okay, so it's okay to blob on the end there because that's going to be dark anyways, but right after that you're going to want to just dry brush it on. What's funny is that when I first started Ogres, on the GW site, their color scheme for the tusks, I actually didn't like this theme, and some people don't, still don't, but after I did them on my guys, and you see what it looks like, those dark browns matching up with the lighter browns on the all the leather pieces and stuff, it, it's really, really nice. <clears throat> very, very nice. Gosh, I hope I've been doing this on the camera. I keep forgetting to look down and see if I'm in the right spot, but um, hopefully I am. I think my mom's about to come back in the door. She's got groceries. 
always very grateful. And then while they're picking up groceries. One of the luxuries, I suppose, of living with your mother. <laughs> Don't think I could afford it even remotely right now. So look at that. Looking good. Looking good. Awesome. So now we're going to take Chaos Black. And really, you take the Chaos Black and you just... There's... The Black by GW has such a high pixel... Not pic, pigment. It has such a high pigment count that you, you could take almost all of it off the brush. And it's still going to show up. Yeah, oh yeah. That pure black will be in there. The black is what makes it, in my opinion. Once that, that final black tip is just... It really makes the whole thing come together. Yeah, I just I get the tip as black as possible and then I just start kind of dragging down and getting that transition. That back side is not as well done as I would have liked it. There's kind of a blotch, I can see it there. But that's okay, because we've got the black now, we just kind of... Just kind of go over it lightly. Not panicking. And look at that. If you don't like the look of that, then, well, obviously it's not your thing, because I think that's just gorgeous. Next, take a fine detail brush. Actually, you know what? Scratch that. We're going to take a bigger brush, which I probably dropped on the floor, as I did. Standard brush, something like this. Let me zoom out. Um, let me get that wet. Oh, that's a better point. Just something like that. Here's some scale for you. We're going to take Gruffin Sepia. Let's see if we can find it. Agrax, Bada Black. My luck, we won't find it. Here it is Seraphin Sepia. I have the old Gruffin Sepia as well. That'll work. Doesn't matter. We're gonna do is we're gonna take a big blob of this. We're gonna put it over on my palette. So I, I usually put a lot more than I need, but then we're going to add water to that. Um, not not super picky. Just get a few drops of water in there. Water it down. This is probably somewhere around four, four to one. Water, four parts. One part Gruffin Sepia. Because you really want that to be light. We're going to take that and we're just going just gonna to put it on there. Nice and smooth. Some beautiful transitions. And what you'll see right away is that that watered down sepia matches up perfectly. Like, I'm talking perfectly with Bella Brown. Like, it, it's like they're derived from each other when, when you put them on. It, they're the exact same. 
So those transitions that you did earlier with the bones or the tusks, they really shine. So you let that dry, put that aside. And you're going to get this. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed. 20 minutes of your life is now gone. Hopefully I didn't uh, hijack it too bad. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, that's how you do tusks. You can do that on pretty much anything. Anything you wanted. That's how I did... Uh, I can grab them from here. I, that's the same effect as this cat right here. This guy. Same effect. Um, nothing different. It's the exact same transitions. So, take the time. Do it. I know sometimes some people might say, I'm sorry, I'm not spending 20 minutes on some tasks, but... Maybe there's faster ways as well, I don't know. But the effect is um, very nice. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Catch you later. Bye.